Hello and welcome to vPython for Beginners. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you need to be working with vPython, but you're really not sure how to get started. So let's jump right in. You can code right along with me in these videos. Uh, the first thing you want to do is log in to glowscript.org. Glowscript.org is this website that will run vPython for you and store your programs, and it all takes place within a web browser. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to save any local files. You just need to log in. Now, it requires a Google account to log in. You probably already have one of those. If you don't, uh, it's a good idea to have one because lots of places uh, online will take a Google account for your login. When you start out, you're going to have two folders, private and public. Um, you can use the private for code that you don't want anybody else to see. You can use public to store code that you want to share. So like if you need to submit a code as a homework assignment, this is a great place to store it. Or you can make your own folder and organize things however you want. I've got several folders, including this one, which is publicly available to you in a link in the description below. So when you want to get started, uh, the you've got two options. You can either start with a program that already exists, so like by accessing this folder, or you can just click on create new program. And uh, we're gonna call this program our first, actually we need to give it capitals because it doesn't know spaces, our first vPython program. You can call it whatever you want, you click create, and what it does is it opens an editor. Um, and what I want you to think about is, I want you to think about this program as a set of instructions that you're giving to the computer to do. It's gonna start in line one, move on to line two, move on to line three, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the first thing that you definitely wanna do, or learn how to do, is how to get the computer to talk to you. Because you can have the computer do all sorts of wonderful calculations, solve all the world's problems, find the answer to life, the universe, and everything, and if it never tells you the answer, then all of that information stays locked away in the computer and you never get to know it. Um, so the primary way you can do this is by using what's called the print command. Now you notice as soon as I typed the word print, it turned blue. And that indicates that this is a word that vPython already knows the meaning of. It's already a built-in function in vPython. Uh, to tell it to print something, you just make an open parentheses. You can give it a space if you want. The spaces don't really matter all that much to the computer. And then you tell it what you want it to print. Um, an easy thing to tell it to print is hello. Now, if you uh, run the code just as it is now, it will give you an error because it's going to tell you it doesn't know what hello is. We have to tell it we want it to say the word hello, and we can do that with some quotation marks. So it's literally like when you're writing a sentence, when you want to say that somebody said something, you put it in quotation marks. You notice as soon as we put quotation marks around this, it turned green. That's some color coding that tells me that this is interpreting this as literal text and not as computer jargon. And this is a nice self-contained program. We can run this program right now. You've got a couple of options. You can click on run and it will run in this window or you can click control two and it'll run in another window. Let's just run it in this window for now. And then we'll do control two on the next one. Um, it usually takes a second the first time that vPython runs. And here it printed out hello. This is what I told it to print. And this is what it does. It prints hello out to the screen. Isn't that wonderful? And you can change this to whatever you want. You can add in hello Brian with an exclamation mark and a smiley face. See, isn't programming friendly? Look at this. This computer is going to say hello. It knows my name and it's smiling at me. Isn't that great? Okay, so you're probably wondering, okay, that's wonderful, but I need my computer to do more sophisticated things. But really, this is one of the most important things you can learn to tell the computer to do. Because like I said, if you want the computer doing calculations for you, then you need it to be able to tell you to do, you need, blah, blah, blah. you need it to be able to tell you the results of this calculation. Sorry, I get excited about programming, so I trip over my words sometimes. Let's say you've been assigned to add five plus two. You can have the Python do five plus two and it will print out the result. Now we know the answer to that. The answer is seven. And the good thing is the computer knows the answer is seven. And that's one thing you always want to do with a computer program is if you already know the answer to one problem, have the computer solve the problem that you know the answer to so that you can check it before you move on to things you don't know the answer to. So like five plus two 
divided by three. I'm not entirely sure what seven thirds is in a decimal representation, but now I trust that the computer knows what it's doing. Oh, and of course it's 2.33 repeating. I, I, I could have done that in my head. Uh, let's do something a little more interesting. Let's flip those around. Let's do a five plus three divided by seven. Divided by seven is a nasty operation because it gives out this gobbledygook right here. So already we see how you can use vPython in place of your calculator. Uh, you can use it to do these simple calculations here. So like I can add on two times three uh, divided by four plus three squared. Now in order to do squared in vPython, it doesn't know what a caret is. It doesn't know what this thing is. Actually, it doesn't know what it is. It just has a different purpose for it. So for Python, you have to do a double asterisk for an exponent. So double asterisk means exponent. And excuse me, I just did something without telling you what I was doing. When you put in this little number sign, uh, what the kids these days call a hashtag, it interprets that as a comment, meaning everything after this is grayed out and it's not going to process that. This is just a little note to self. So it's not going to read this. This is for us to read. So already we've learned how to use vPython. I just hit control two to open it in a new window. We've already learned how to use vPython as a calculator. So here, as long as you've got your computer in front of you, you never have to reach for a calculator again. You can just have vPython do the calculation for you. Um, let's see, is there some fun calculation that we can do here? Um, oh, I know, let's have this thing tell us what E is. Uh, if you look up uh, series for E, one of the ways that you can get E is by adding, uh, let's see, is by adding a bunch of fractions together. Let's see if it can give us E. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's sum over uh, one over n factorial. So we can do one over one plus one over one times two plus one over one times two times three, oops not 30, plus one over one times two times three times four. This is getting laborious to write. So I'm gonna do a control copy, control paste, and then you just tack on times five, and you do that an infinite number of times, and the thing will give you E. Now, I don't have time on this video to do an infinite number of times. This video is long enough as it is. But that's a uh, 1.17, I thought E was two point something is 2.718. I'm missing a, oh, 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 I'm supposed to have a, a one over zero factorial here. So I need a one plus this. Okay, there we go. Try that one more time. 2.716, the real number is 2.718. So we already got E to within uh, a couple of decimal places. So on your first day of programming, you've already gotten E from a computer. Isn't that cool? So uh, feel free to take this code from the description below, put in whatever calculations or text you want to have it print, and uh, you can start using vPython as a calculator. Next time, we're going to take a look at how you can use variables in vPython and why that's important to us in physics. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.